Welcome! In this presentation, I'm going to review some key concepts about computational thinking and how it's related to computer science. This is the um, introduction to our first, your first class in the Computer Science Education Certificate on computational thinking, and so these are some key foundational ideas that we're going to carry with us through the rest of the uh, course sequences. So um, I'll go over a little bit about what defining computational thinking and computer science is, as well as some connections with 21st century skills, the K-12 CS framework, and the uh, K-12 Computer Science Teachers Association standards. So what is computer science? Um, computer science, just first, is not about teaching with technology. So it's not about how to use smart boards, graphing calculators, or iPads in your classroom. It really is about the study of computers and their algorithmic processes, the principles, the design, the implementation, and their impact on society. So one way that um, I often like to think about computer science is we are teaching kids about computer science because we want them to be the creators of technology and not the users of technology. So things like understanding algorithms and the principles and designs and how they um, are implemented is one of the key foundational things to be able to create using technology. Um, computational thinking is probably a term that you might have heard that goes along with computer science. And um, in my personal view, I feel like computational thinking is kind of like the gateway to computer science. It's something that is a component of what computer science is, but it's really also something that all students should understand and know how to use because it can help them in their um, jobs and future work um, and their everyday lives as they go forward and we become a more technologically dependent society. So the term itself was originally coined by Jeanette Wing. Um, the definition that we're going to kind of use that is a standard that goes along with um, the CSTA standards in the K-12 CS framework is this one that came out of an article from Cooney, Snyder, and Wing. So the thought processes involved in formulating problems and their solutions so that the solutions are represented in a form that can be effectively carried out by an information processing agent, for example, a computer. All right. So there's a lot about how do you formulate problems and solve them and then make them so that that problem solving process is something that a, com a computer can do. Um, we're also using Scratch in this course and the creative computing guide that we'll use as we go through the course has a slightly different definition of computational thinking. Um, both of which I think are valuable and good to know and understand. When you um, look at the standards and frameworks, you're going to see that there's some overlap with this idea of we want to teach kids both concepts and practices. Um, Brennan and Resnick also introduced the idea of perspectives. So the, um, the perspectives designers form about what the world around them looks like and about themselves. So we'll come back to those ideas, concepts, practices, and then we'll kind of leave to the side perspectives part of it. But but those are um, key parts of the standards and framework. Um, another connection that is often made with teachers um, related to their schools is that many schools have a big push to incorporate or to address the 21st century learning um, for their students. And so here's um, you know, a graphic that represents what's commonly talked about in, in terms of 21st century learning. Computer science has some key tie-ins here. For example, the information media and technology skills. Um, there's also some key tie-ins if we look at some of these um, skills under learning and innovation around problem solving and critical thinking. We're also really going to take a look at how to communicate about computer computing, how you collaborate in a computing environment, and how creativity and innovation are really a key and core part of what we do in computer science. There's also some other themes that tie back to computer science, including this idea of global awareness or impact, information and technology literacy, innovation, and then just life and career skills. So uh, to give you a little background then in terms of the computer science standards, um, the standards we had previously been using were released in 2011 and that was um, pretty much the first big major release of um, computer science standards at a national level. 
from the Computer Science Teachers Association. In 2015, the CS Framework Group and the CSTA Standards Revision Committee both began work on revising and um, revising in the case of standards and beginning in the case of framework um, those documents. And this was based on a process that was used with um, the national science standards and GSS, the next generation science standards, and uh, they started off by coming up with a framework first and then going through processes to create standards based on that framework. So this was happening a little bit more at the same time than the science standards did, but it um, relied heavily on the processes and lessons learned through that um, activity. So in 2016, the interim draft of the standards was released in July, and they are working on a final draft that will be released um, here in the next year, once the final framework, computer science framework, was released later in September. And so those two are tightly connected and use many of the same terms. Um, in the standards and framework, you're going to see these concepts, so data and analysis, networks and the internet, computing systems, algorithms and programming, and impacts of computing. Those are the five main um, strands or stand, uh, um, concepts that we'll see throughout the framework and throughout the standards. And then we'll also see focus on these practices. So there are uh, seven practices, fostering an inclusive computing culture, collaboration, um, recognizing and defining computational problems, developing and using abstractions, creating computational artifacts or you know basically something that you create using a computer, testing and refining computational artifacts, and communicating about computing. The ones that have the white background are really ones that are key to the idea of computational thinking. It's not that the other three are not, but those are ones that are often um, related directly back to computational thinking. So what is the relationship between frameworks and standards then? Um, K-12 CS framework says that the framework is a baseline, an essential set of computer science concepts and practices. It's to illuminate these powerful ideas that we have in computer science, especially at the K-12 area. And they um, provide a narrative describing practice progressions from kindergarten to grade 12. All right. Standards then, according to the CSTA standards document, is a core set of learning objectives designed to provide the foundation for a complete computer science curriculum. So standards are often thought of something that you can assess, whereas a framework can be used to generate standards. So here's a graphic that the um, K-12 CS framework group put together. So the framework includes these concepts and practices, concepts being something a student should know, practices, something a student should be able to do, and they have um, those separated out, so concepts and practices as separate pieces. If you put them together, then then you um, come up with a standard or learning objective, something that a student should be able to know and do, and that you can then assess in the classroom. Um, the other organization that uh, is really taking a look at computational thinking is ISTE, so the International um, Society for Technology Education. In there, they now have a computational thinker um, strand as part of their um, tw new 2016 standards, and they define computational thinker as students who are able to develop and employ strategies for understanding and solving problems in ways that leverage the power of technological methods to develop and test solutions. So you can see that there's some tie-ins back to those definitions, original definitions of um, computational thinking about defining and solving problems and being able to, um, you know, test and use a computer to do that. Um, here are the indicators for computational thinking under that area of is that um, particular ISTE standard area. So I'll let you read through those. I've highlighted some keywords for you that tie into what we've already taken a look at in computational thinking and computer science. And finally, um, our book also takes a look at defining computational thinking. So we're using uh, this new book, Computational Thinking and Coding for Every Student by Jane Krauss and Kiki Protzman. They have years of experience in um, thinking about and working with students on how to um, you know, how to teach them computer science and computational thinking. And they really have a very nice practical guide for getting started in the classroom. 
They have a looser definition, um, but it's based on these four pillars that we are going to take a look at throughout the semester. They also come into play in many other definitions of computational thinking, um, and you'll actually see some of those as part of the, the standards and words that relate back to those standards and frameworks terms. So they're talking about four pillars of computational thinking, decomposition, pattern matching, abstraction, and algorithms or automation. They have a great example, the Sudoku one in their book, where they walk you through how those four patterns or those four pillars are applied to solving the problem of a Sudoku using a computational approach. So not just any approach for solving it, but approach that could be followed by a computer and automated for solving the Sudoku grid. So I really encourage you to pay close attention to that and see and try to understand how those four things are being applied. We'll come back to those four things over and over during the um, semester as we go through the book and the course activities. I wanted to give you one final example, however, of how abstraction applies both both in real world and then also in the scratch programming language so you have a better tie-in to um, some of the other things we're doing in the course. So abstraction is this idea that you're reducing complexity to define a main idea, that you're taking out some of those details um, so that you can just focus on what that main idea is. So on one side of the screen you'll see a political map and that political map is a map of the world but it only represents country borders and names. So it doesn't have um, a lot of the physical landscape and geography that you might see on other types of maps. So it's abstracted away details so that we can focus on those key things, just the countries, their names, and their borders. On the other side of the screen, you'll see some code from scratch, and this actually comes from an activity that you'll do as part of the Creative Computing Guide. This is the make a block. Um, the purple define jump is the make a block um, concept that you're go going to learn and this is how you define or create your own block and you'll see that a jump block actually consists of um, two steps that are repeated 20 times each where the ch um, the y or you know, like if you think of an xy coordinate plane the y value is changed by 4 to jump up and then changed by negative 4 to jump down so when you see that um, there are some co uh, more complex details that are in there but the term jump is the main idea that goes with those steps. And so once you define that block, you make that block, you can reuse it in other places. So when the space key is pressed, the jump block is called. And now when you look at the code for jump, you don't have to understand the details that go into the jump, that it is um, two repeat statements, up by four, down by four each time but just that it is a jump and you can use that command. So that has abstracted away the details of how the jump happens so that you just know you can use a jump. So that's one way um, abstraction shows up in our programs and in Scratch. So just a recap, computer science is not about consuming but about creating tech with technology. Um, computational thinking is learning how to use the power of computing to solve problems and there are lots of connections to 21st century skills and the CSEA uh, standards and the framework. Um, I would just you know say that again computational thinking is a skill that everybody should have. It is something that every student in every school should be learning to do. Good luck in the course and we look forward to um, talking more about what computational thinking means to you and how you're going to apply it in your environment.